Okay, it's working. Awesome. I hope you guys can hear me. Um, so yeah, my name's Nick. Nice to meet everybody. I'm gonna meet you, but so this is the FD Religion 200 with Brother Stoffer. Stoffer, sorry, bad with names. But so this is a Semester Family Citizen Capstone project. Um, why did I choose a video blog? Um, it's kind of something that I've been wanting to do for a long time now. Um, I like. I'm not really good at journaling. Never have been. I was good on my mission because it was like, all right, you have time to journal now, so go ahead and journal. But kind of after my mission, I've been kind of slacking. Really haven't been doing my journal, so I need to repent. But I, um, I thought, you know, hey, making a video is pretty easy. You just kind of hit the play button and just let it record and then just talk about, you know, what happened in your day and in your week. And so I think this is cool because, you know, throughout the week we – are told to you know think about what we're reading, what we're pondering, and um, you know it's tough to like capture those moments unless you do it like right then and there when you journal it. But um, you know that's what papers for. You know writing, sorry, writing notes down, and uh, you know having things to you know go back to and read. So um, I think I just like do a little intro video because it's the first video. A little about myself. I'm 22. Just had a birthday yesterday. Woo. Um, it was a good one. Got to hang out with my friends, and it kind of uh, it's interesting because I really love my birthday, but it takes me to a place where it takes me. It reminds me of my parents. You know. <laughs> you know. Often we think of birthdays as like, oh, it's a it's a personal thing. It's it's my day. But really, it goes back to my mom and my dad. You know, if it wasn't for them. I wouldn't be here, you know, I wouldn't be where I was, I I wouldn't be on the earth, so, you know, I'm grateful for them and, you know, all the hard work and everything they've done to, like, you know, make sure that I had a good birthday, and now that I'm away from home, you know, at college and being an adult and stuff, you know, it's, it's fun, but it makes me miss them, you know, love them, and it makes me appreciate, you know, my friends around me, the support group that I do have because you know good friends are hard to come by but um, when you find a good one you find good friends and you stick with them forever uh, yeah so and you know like up here it's kind of like we're all alone. not like we're all away from home so you know your roommates become your new family members and I really appreciate how uh, do I say this I really appreciate my roommates because they're so amazing. They're really great guys. Like, every one of them, stud muffin. Um, if you're a single lady, 22-ish, you can come to my apartment. I will introduce you to five good-looking gentlemen that are all available. All RMs, okay? Um, so they're cool guys. <laughs> I love them. Uh, they just make, you know, make me want to be better. You know, they make me want to follow Christ more. Make me want to, like... Make sure I'm really reading my scriptures and make sure I'm really praying and, uh, you know, it just kind of makes me, like, think about, you know, am I the same kind of friend, you know, back to them? Am I being the same kind of, like, family member? I remember, like, you know, in the family proclamation of the world, it tells us, like, every individual has their own responsibilities to the family, you know? Obviously, you know, dads are caretakers and moms are nurturers. And, you know, I mean, like, you don't have to get too specific into it. But everybody has their own individual responsibilities to lift and, like, up. I can't speak English. Lift and inspire. Not inspire, but take care of one another. You know, watch each other's backs. Am I my brother's keeper? You know, that famous scripture in, I'm pretty sure it's Genesis. But... Or Abraham. I think it's Abraham, actually. Go Abraham. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think, you know, we're all our, our, our brother's keepers. And um, it's good to have a good support group around you, you know. It's good to have people that are family. And uh, so cool. But I kind of want to just, yeah, I like soccer. I like running. 
Um, I love Chinese and Japanese. I love Asian food. I think I was, I should have been born Asian, but hey, you yeah. know. So now I just kind of show you guys my family. Um, so a, a picture is going to have to do. Um, so this is my youngest sister, Sam. There's me, good looking guy. Um, there's my um, younger sister, Caitlin. My younger brother, Brandon. It's my dad. And then that's my stepmom. So it's kind of funny. Um, all because of my stepmom, my entire family is like LDS. You know? my, my dad had me and then got divorced and then married her. And then he got converted to the gospel. And so, you know, it's God works in mysterious ways. So I'm really grateful for my family. You know? we're, we're different. We're definitely different. But... I love them so much and so grateful for them. But cool. So I guess I just maybe I'll start talking about gospel stuff. I mean, I have been talking about gospel stuff, but just kind of like thoughts that I've had. Um, so I kind of went back and I read some, reread some talks and just kind of wanted to talk about marriage. Um, I am engaged. I'm planning on getting married this April. It's really exciting. A little scary, a little nerve-wracking, but hey, you know, it's kind of like life in a nutshell, and I'm excited for it, actually. I really am. But I love um, that I'm taking this family class before marriage because it's it has been great at preparing me, I feel like, honestly. And um, I love Elder Bednar's talk from Unit 2 that we just read. It says marriage is essential to his eternal plan, you know, the plan of salvation. So I think I'm going to touch on maybe four points. i got a quote from a cool lady, Al Fox, you may or may not know her, and uh, yeah, a little testimony, and then, you know, probably wrap this thing up, so, <clears throat> in Elder Bezner's talk, he goes and talks about how marriage is essential to the plan of salvation, how is it essential to, you know, exaltation, and um, he starts really basic, and he says, there's two compelling doctrines for eternal marriage, he says, one, um, that's actually like I'll pull the quote up so I don't botch it. Um, okay, reason: the natures of male and female spirits complete and perfect, perfect each other. Therefore, men and women intended to progress further toward exaltation. And so I think it's it's really cool. It's kind of like how do you say it? Like I'm, you know, I'm a green. I'm like I'm like a green block, but you're a blue block. But like you know, like we complete each other, like become one. I don't know. That was a weird example. Uh, you know, like Legos. How like Legos like stack on each other to make a bigger Lego, like a better Lego, stronger Lego. And I think it's cool because, um, also like going back to like the gender talks and the gender, sorry, podcasts about how gender is divine, how gender is unique. How gender was, you know, something from the pre-mortal. And that's so important because we have to be different. Like, that's God's plan. That's God's way. You know, Heavenly Father is a male and Heavenly Mother is, a, you know, female. That's how it works. And, um, you know, we're two different people, but we're completing each other. And I think that's so cool. It's like you're finally... Find that missing piece, you know. You find what drives you to make you a better person. It drives, drives you to make, like, and it's like that you complete each other to work together towards exaltation. So it's not like, you know, oh, you hear all the time, oh, I married up, you know. I'm, I'm definitely marrying up, but you're going together, you know. I lift thee and thee lift me and we'll both ascend together. So, I think exaltation, like, this compelling doctrine that Elder Bednar is talking about is really cool because it's so true. It's just true. Like, we're just puzzle pieces finding, are trying to find our perfect match. And I, I think we do. We find it. And so, I was talking to my fiancé and... 
she shared this cool quote with me the other day, and I'm going to read it. It's from Al Fox. Um, she's the, the tattoo Mormon lady, if you're not like too familiar with her. But So, this is, I'm going to read it. That's what marriage should be. A team to make the journey back to God easier and more fulfilling. Do hard things together. Always have time for love. Help other, help each other reach goals. Every day, make one-on-one -on -one time just talk, just to talk. Hold hands when you pray, but mostly seek the Lord together and make the temple the centerpiece of your lives. That's the most important relationship we will ever have is with our Heavenly Father. But through Him, all other relationships in our life will be be strengthened. So that's cool. It's like you know, Heavenly Father is. The most important thing. He's like number one, you know. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And it's funny, like, <laughs> you know, we don't make covenants to each other. We make covenants with God. And so, like, as we individually strengthen our covenants and, like, come closer into Heavenly Father, like, essentially we come closer to, like, our spouse. And um, I'm excited for it, you know. So cool. Uh, the next doctrine he talks about is men and men and women are needed to bring children into mortality because it is the best setting to teach them the gospel. Now, obviously, like Heavenly Father wants all of His children to return back to Him to heaven, and I think the best way to do that is to, you know, teach them while they're young. <laughs> and I think Proverbs like twenty two six is like. Teach the child how to rear him. He, he won't sway, you know. But, I mean, there's a couple of scriptures in Proverbs that are, you know, like, beat the child with a rod or something like that. And, you know, a little bit different. But, um, but yeah, like, the, the home is the best place to teach the gospel. I've noticed it um, in other people's homes. My home wasn't the best example growing up, but I have noticed it. Um, when I was on my mission or when I was at other friends' houses that, you know, you read together, you pray together, you teach the doctrines, you teach of the atonement of Jesus Christ. And kids, they can feel comfortable sharing their testimonies at home. And then they build those testimonies. And then when they get outside, they can share those testimonies. And you know, I've seen it. I've seen the gospel work in homes. And... I'm actually really excited about my own family because I want I want this I want the eternal family I want my family to be together forever and you know I know through the gospel you can do it like without a doubt you'll have a happy family in this life and a happy family in the next and I'm just excited for it yeah but so the next one he talks about Bednar goes on and he says, like, okay, well, we have these two doctrines. Now we can draw two principles from these doctrines. The first principle is the importance of eternal marriage is only understood in the context of the plan of salvation. So if you just said, okay, we, we get married forever, and that's it, you know. Uh, but why? You know, it kind of makes it, like, it just doesn't make sense. Like, why are we married forever? You know, but if you have the plan of salvation, you know that this, like, act one, this act two wasn't just here for a reason. There was an act one, and there's going to be an act three. And so we continue on this path of just better improving ourselves till we're exalted and becoming like God. And it's crazy to think about. And it's hard to, like, I don't know, like, wrap your my mind around it. But it it makes sense because... Um, we have to become like our Heavenly Father. And without eternal marriage, without the priesthood, it wouldn't be possible. So it would just be kind of pointless to be on the earth. <laughs> you know, it's that final step that we need to get into the, the celestial kingdom. You know, make covenants and, you know, get married. <sighs> so, yeah. And then the last principle, he talks about Satan desires that all men and women be miserable like him. And this is so true. Like, it's funny. Like, Satan doesn't want you to be happy. He wants you to be miserable and upset. 
and but he 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 comes off it's like oh i'm your pal i'm your friend like this is fun and you know he gets you because he's smart he's been doing this for five thousand years or however old he's been he's been doing it for longer than that you know yeah i don't know but he's been doing it for a while so he's he's obviously skilled at tempting people and getting us to commit sin and we forget that we forget that when we're being tempted it's not from god god isn't saying oh yeah do drugs you know satan is telling us to to do drugs do do bad things so i think we have to remember that whenever we're trying to whenever we want to choose the right we got to choose the right we can't we can't become like satan you know matthew 6:24 you can only serve one master. You can't serve two masters. You know, I can't go to church on Sunday and then the next day I'll be at the bar drinking, you know, booze. It's just not possible. You know? And it's funny, is if you follow the commandments, you become more Christ-like because you're following in his footsteps. But if you sin and do all these other things, you're kind of following Satan. So you've got to call in Satan's footsteps. And it's like, oh, shoot, you shouldn't do that. You don't want to become like Satan. And if you think you think about it like that, you're like, oh shoot, I don't want to be like Satan. And you know, he's really attacking like the family. It's like the family at its core beliefs and its core values between a man and a woman lately. And it's 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 crazy how um they gave the proclamation, um, you know what? nine eight nine years ago and uh marriage is ordained between a man and a woman you know but now it's like everyone everyone's pushing for you know gay rights and gay marriages but that's not how god ordained marriage and it's funny you think you know america you know land of the free home of the brave oh you know you can do it you know you're gay but if you like look at our constitution and you look at what set of values that we established this country on, it was on the principles of God. You, When you were in fourth or fifth grade, you said the Pledge of Allegiance every day. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Um, indivisible for which it stands, one nation, under God. Right? We said that every day. We said under God. Yet we didn't understand it. We didn't think what does under God really mean. If we were under God, we'd really be undivisible. But now we're a country divided. And even in First Nephi, it talks about how um, Nephi, if thy descendants, you know, don't follow the commandments, this nation's gonna go to poop. You know, so I think it's interesting, and I think Satan has a lot of tactics, and he's attacking families. And I think we just have to be strong. We have to um, do what the proclamation says. Teach each one another, love one another, um, have fun, wholesome recreations with each other, make time, and, you know, just love. Just be with each other, pray for each other, establish that house of prayer, that house of fasting. So, yeah. My, I know the church is true, and I know that God loves each and every one of us, and I'm you know, grateful that maybe some of you watched this far. I, I doubt anybody did. I'm kind of dry. It's a long video, 19 minutes, wow. And now if you're still watching, I'm just rambling. So, sorry, Brother Stuffer. <laughs> but I love you guys. Um, so sweet. Appreciate everybody, you know, coming and watching. So, uh, yeah, video number one. Can't wait to see you guys next week for video number two. And yeah, take it easy. Have a good weekend. Week.